no, and, you know, you guys talk a lot about right wing media, obviously, on the majority report. And another interesting piece of evidence that I've, uh, you know, it's not a scientific piece of evidence, but it's still something that I've observed is a weird uh, phenomena in right wing media where it seems like this depression is setting in like prematurely. And, and I'm not sure if it has to do with the fact that Trump's not doing as well as they would hope he would be doing. Maybe it has to do with the fact that he's just totally lost any of his populist edge. He doesn't talk about being corruption proof. He doesn't talk about draining the swamp. Like you said, he's out here begging Elon Musk and Miriam Adelson for as much money as possible and you know promising to do their bidding in return. So you can't even really pretend that he's going to shake anything up or uh, make America great again. And it really seems like that's been reflected on the right wing media space. One person specifically that I thought it would be funny to react to a quick clip of is actually Jimmy Dore, uh, someone who obviously you've been a bit of a nemesis of, Sam, uh, obviously had that infamous debate where he called into the majority report. And I think that your comments have aged pretty well. Yeah, the on moon the fell into Lake Michigan. Yeah, the, the moon did, in fact, fall into Lake Michigan. It, it did, uh, yeah. <laughs> but let's take a look here because he actually recently popped up on Jackson Hankel's new podcast. Oh, geez. And he seems a little bit depressed. Uh, here he is at the end of his grift, essentially. Well. You know, he's he's done exactly what all of his critics predicted that he would do. He's completely sold out to the right. Uh, he embarrasses himself on a daily basis. Um, but isn't that supposed to be like, isn't that what he wanted? Isn't that why he did it in the first place for money and attention from these people? I don't know what happened, but it seems like he lost a step somewhere along the way. And now he sounds a little bit depressed about it. So let's take a quick look. I'm fascinated to get your response to this, Sam, as someone who, like us, has watched Jimmy's trajectory from the very beginning. I don't have anything. I have, you know, uh, I mean, I, even my even my old friends in Hollywood, they don't understand what I'm doing. They, they, they think I'm a Trumper and uh, they see things in a binary. They still pat themselves in the back for voting for Kamala Harris. And today, literally today, I had a friend on on Twitter who I've known since I got to Los Angeles. And uh, he said to me, uh, on, you know, all kinds of garbage about uh, uh, you, you've got a horrible job turning Democrats into Trump, into Republicans and enjoy your kingdom of dirt. And all, <laughs> I'm like, holy. Sh and. Uh, did you guys and look up and see who this so, is? I mean, they have uh, to. I'm a fruit basket. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, that's the main part I wanted to get your reaction to. It's it's kind of sad, right? Like, I mean, J Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I, 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 I. It is interesting what's going on, um, particularly with that sort of ilk of of people, because you know, um, in in 2020, even. To, to some extent, certainly in 2016, there, there was this sort of like, they had an audience of people on the left and there's every reason to be disaffected if you're, you know, somewhere from like center left to left. Uh, and particularly if you're younger and you don't, you, you, you don't, you haven't seen, um, you know, change, you haven't seen the move, you know, movement and, and see how long sometimes it can take. Um, and he had an audience that he could speak to. And, and I just like, you know, we were talking, we didn't really cover too, too much on the show, but that, uh, restore the Republic where yeah. like, um, uh, Taibi rescue went, the Republic, uh, or rescue the Republic. Yeah. And, and, we're gonna and make America healthy again. That's and, what we're gonna do <laughs> Bobby went down there and, um, and I was like, you know, it's amazing. It, I don't, it, there's no, they're not bringing anybody to the party. Like they're not like, they're just, they don't have the same audience. Their audience is, is, is on the right. Yeah. They're not like bringing disaffected leftists there. They're just going to sort of like their, you know, right wing audiences. And it, it was just fascinating to me, like how much, how much it, it, that cohort of people were effective uh, in, in, in 2016, let's say, and even to, in 2020 on some level. And now they just don't resonate. Like it, things have sorted. 
uh, out in a, in a different way. And, um, I, you know, I wonder because I, I mean, I can see like our views, our views spiked like a hockey stick when, uh, Harris became, (laughs) um, uh, the nominee and now they've gone back down almost to where, you know, a little bit higher than they were. Um, you know, which was still somewhat elevated, but because it's, you know, presidential election, but so I think like some of the enthusiasm has drained out of this on, you know, the sort of the center to the left. I think people are just like, let's just get this over with because she's not, you know, generating the same type of enthusiasm. I, I, you know, I saw today that like Brian Deese, uh, was going to support Lena Khan and I'm very excited about that, but yes, but the three of us to be excited about that is to be in the smallest cohort of human beings on the planet. And like, I'm so excited about the FTC chair and yeah. people and- are just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, well, I was just going to say on the right, like I have a feeling things have cratered for them. And, and part of it is because they're so sort of like all over the place, but you know, uh, Tim pool invited me on his show. I don't know if you knew this, and uh, I, I'm going to go on it in like uh, two weeks or something. Ooh. I'm I'm already excited? sort of no, I'm not excited at all about it. Actually, it's <laughs> are you going to the studio into his compound or whatever? I'm going down to Off Brand Neverland, and um, I, I just know I'm of uh, you know flying out. It was I realized like, anyways, he's he's uh, claiming that he's offended uh, that I said something uh, about him. And it's like, oh, I saw that. Where have you been? Where have you been? I've been, uh, you know, offending you. I thought that was the reason why I wasn't invited because you were so offended by me. Um, But uh, I I get the sense that um, it's a function of, you know, uh, they're worried about their views. Um, and that, you know, he wants to have like a, uh, a debate to drive traffic. And, mm. uh, I, I just think it's an odd choice for him to do, uh, before the election. Now, of course, you know, I couldn't really say, uh, no, um, as much as I'm like, I have already regretted it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've already regretted the whole thing. Uh, frankly, like I'm, you know, I didn't. I, I realized like, oh, shit, it's the morning after. I can't go early. I can't go the night before because it's Halloween. And I have an 11-year-old oh. son oh. and I'm going to miss the last oh. year or two of Halloween. So I'm going to leave at like 5. I have a 5 a.m. flight or something. Oh, uh, that means you got to wake up at like 3 in the morning. Oh, no. It's going to be horrible. And <laughs> I, I – and, and – I also just like am not as interested in Tim Pool as um, I don't know that I ever was, uh, well, but it, it's it, just it, much it, easier to do it to talk, uh, you know, from my studio. And so, yeah. um, but it, but I'm just struck by the fact of like, why now? Like, why are you what? Well, like, he's, why he's losing relevance? Like he like a mother. You're still a clickable name on the internet if you're a triggered right winger. I, I think I, that's I yeah. think that's what it is. I also feel like when it comes to the Tim Pools, because Tim Pool had a somewhat similar trajectory as Jimmy Dore. He also started out as a lefty and then made a big stink about leaving the left. Maybe not as you know right. flamboyantly as right. Jimmy did it, but he still you know had his roots in like Occupy Wall Street. He was like a journalist for Vice or something at one point. I, I gave think. him his first interview on Occupy. Wow. I think oh, I gave him, I, I was the first interview he ever ever wow, had. Thanks a lot, Sam. I know, I know, a monster. I know, I know. <laughs> but I know. but I do feel like back in a certain time, probably around like 2016 to 2018, like these sort of people, Jimmy Dore, uh, Tim Pool, like n- not that you know there would have been a whole lot for you to agree with them on, but I think it would have at least been a more interesting conversation, like a more intellectually engaging conversation. At least people like Jimmy Dore back in that time period it felt like they really believed in something or stood for something, even if it was misguided, even if it was something that you felt necessary to debate them on, like you did with Jimmy, at least it didn't totally just feel like they were boring uh, talking point readers. And and that's kind of the vibe I get now from a lot of these right wingers. It's like, you know, it's not even really interesting. It's not engaging. It's not edgy. It's not even populist anymore. It's just kind of like, okay, 
But what's the point of listening to this? It's very tedious. It's very boring. It seems like they're reading a script almost. And he with Tim Pool, he might it. be reading a script. We found out about the tenant media thing. Um, but right. you know what I mean? Like, who, who's the yeah, I mean, conservative I, commentator right now? Who's, who's I, actually using waves? It's, I, I, I agree with you. There's no, I mean, I'm not like, you know, uh, Jimmy's a slightly different case. I mean, I think like his politics were, um, I mean, he was, uh, you know, by the time like early 2016, it wasn't so much that I had an issue with his, uh, politics as much as like, I mean, the dude said, who cares if Peter Thiel, it, he literally said like, who cares if Peter Thiel is the Supreme court justice. That was what, mm -hmm. that's what, why I, that, that whole debate actually happened. It wasn't, I, I you know, I was like, the, what the f is this dude talking about? Like, like, you know, I mean, I, 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 I knew him from a distance, you know, from, you know, on TYT and I had met him once or twice. And, uh, Michael uh, Brooks was, you know, friendly with him. And I just came out like, what the, what Peter Thiel, does he have no idea who these people are? Like what, what I don't understand. Like, and I sent him an email and I'm like, dude, you want to come on and talk about this? Because the shit you're saying about the Supreme court is just, it's just wrong. Like, and he said, uh, no, I, I remember this. He said, no, go ahead. Rip me, rip me a new one. That's no. And so I started the, the segment and, and I was going to be courteous because my feeling at that time was like, you know, we, I can have differences with people who are like largely do, you know, net positive for uh, the left. And he called in, he, he must've been listening to the show because we, you know, uh, was live audio. So he called in in the middle of that and I'm like, Oh, okay, let's do this. Um, Tim pool. I gotta say, I don't know that he ever had any politics to be honest with you. I don't think Tim ever had any politics. Like he was the camera guy at, um, at occupy. And he was interested in the idea, like something's happening. I don't know that there was any ideological sort of like foundations of that. I've never this gone crazy. Back I've never gone back and listened to that interview, to be honest with you. I imagine we must have it posted if, if we even did video at that time. But um, uh, I'm quite sure it was more about like all the tactical stuff. What are the cops doing? What's happening down in Zuccotti? There was no ideological. I don't, I, 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 I'm quite sure that we did not have any deep ideological conversations. And when he was working at Fusion, and when he was working at Vice, um, I've talked to people who were there, who some of them were actually friendly with him. And they're like, hey, he was just a guy who, you know, had sort of like innovated, was one of the first guys to be doing live streaming and mm -hmm. then just hustled from there and made a ton of money to do basically nothing. He had no, he had no ideology. And then he just sort of stumbled into, I think like, the YouTube shit. And I spoke to somebody who visited him when he was in like either, I think it might've been in New Jersey, or maybe it was Maryland. And he was just like, it's great. I don't even have to read. I just do this. And, yeah. um, and I think his politics are just like where he thinks the clicks are.